Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and thanks for watching the video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Always helps. Um, but anyways, what we got here is we are making a filter. Um, it's a water filter. I'm using it for an irrigation system. You can obviously use it for, well, whatever the hell you want. Um, but I have just a four inch piece of drain PVC. So it's a thin wall. Um, and what I did to make this really, really simple is I marked my center line all the way down. Then every three inches, I marked another line. Then on the bandsaw, I simply made all my angle cuts this way. And then flipped it over and made all my angle cuts this way. So then for the other side, and this is where it gets kind of important, um, kind of depending on your what you're doing with it. You could A, either leave this side full, so don't take any cuts out if you have it like sitting on the bottom in like a sand bed or pea gravel bed or something like that. Um, or like mine's going to be standing straight up. So I went and just put a quick score in the center of this part right here, so that way we keep some structure just so you know nothing breaks while it's in there so I don't have to pull it back out again so then after I cut all that out I'm gonna sand this bad boy down get all the burrs out and then I found um, some screen from I, I actually I don't even know where the hell I got it from so then do 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 long story short gonna wrap over there and then I'm gonna glue some connections on So I just finished up adding the last bits of hot glue. Yes, you heard me correctly, hot glue. It is actually um, rated for underwater use because of the type of bonding it uses. And so while it's rated for underwater use, I'm obviously not sure if it's like slight pressure rated so on or what the ratings are so on and so forth so i got really curious um and then originally at my local hd store um the four inch to two inch piece right here they didn't have for the drain tubing for whatever reason so i was going to just put this guy inside of this guy and then drill a two inch hole in there and call it good um, but then when I was doing the reading, sorry for the moving about, but, um, about the hot glue and its capabilities underwater, I just, well, my curiosity have, has gotten the better of me. So I, I mean, I PVC glued the upper lip right here cause that's all that it really touched. Um, but then the rest of it, I mean, I just threw, I don't know, maybe three sticks of hot glue down in there so it's not straight up and down but for this application I mean I'm dropping it inside of a well so I don't really care if it's on a little bit of an angle it's absolutely no big deal to me at all um, but then back to the actual what we got going on here I decided to use hot glue as you can see for the bonding of the screen to the PVC and together so this is actually somewhat important you're obviously gonna have if you use hot glue or tape or whatever you use you want to make sure that your outside lip is very very well secured um, if you get any type of major flapping around or moving and that starts breaking loose okay, actually just see there's a little spot in there we're gonna go back in and get so um, you want to make sure the lips are completely sealed together if you decide to use a tape which i'll throw a link in there for a really good marine tape you're going to actually do two strips you're going to have your your bottom flap is going to be taped down and then your upper flap is going to be taped to that tape because it's obviously not going to get a good um bond where if it's just taped to the screen itself um, unless you get some really wide stuff and then that way you can have a really good chunk in the middle in between the two pieces 
Um, but again, with the tape, same thing. If you get too much flapping around, you're just going to break through the tape seal. If I personally was going to do tape, I would sand out down here and up here. Make sure the screen sits inside these caps so it's held with those. Um, and then do the tape here and down on the inside. That way that whole section back behind it is completely secured. Um, if you're doing this for any type of pump system, please keep in mind that 100% of the time, if you're putting a filter of any nature on a pump, you want the water intake to always be at least double the capabilities of the pump. So for mine, it's going on a two inch um, irrigation pump so I biggest thing to make sure is you have at least four inches of space for water to flow through into the pump at all points in time. That makes it easier for the pump to run and it's not working as hard so it can concentrate on what you actually need it to do and that's push the water. Um, one thing I actually just realized I forgot to do so we'll be back in a minute. I'm going to throw a little surprise up here for all you irrigation people. So here's our newest addition, and I'm a moron, by the way. So in my rapid pace to throw this stuff together, make the video, blah, 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 that kind of thing, I kind of skipped a step and didn't put the piece to screw this into and drill the hole and all that first before I installed this. So that is that took me a minute. Um, so we have... This piece right here is where my overflow tube is going to go to. So when there's excess pressure from that the pressure regulator is releasing, it shoots the water it, through the tube. And I mean, normally I just let it vent into the well uh, itself to recirculate the water. But now with this new filter set up, it will go into there and then right through there so you're getting two added benefits here you are now making sure you're recycling the water um, direct stream so it's going you know right back into the pump and but then at the same time you are also blowing out the filter so when it's pushing, 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 instead of everything being sucked in and stuck on the screen, you'll get that force where it's kind of pushing it back a little bit. So then when the pump stops and that regulator is still going just for that, that second or two longer than the pump, um, and it shoots that last force of water in here, it will help clear all the big debris from your filter, which is A, going to make it... So you don't have to remove the filter as often to clean it off. So you, to keep the longevity of your pump up. Um, and then you're also not going to be cleaning crap out of your, your sprinklers, which in my case, I've got almost 30 sprinklers in my system. Uh, that, that would take a while and be very, very irritating. So I've seen um, ones you can buy that are set up like this. But I mean, it was... I want to say $250, $300, something like that. And, you know, like, honestly, and if you go to a local sprinkler store around me, this exact same setup, 4-inch PVC, the two caps on either side, wrapped and taped in screen, is $120. I mean, that's insane. Literally insane that's like a 500 percent markup plus paying the guy 75 dollars to do it like jesus but regardless of that um so that's when i saw that i was like you know i'm just gonna make it myself the cone one with so with the other one that i'm talking about that was like 250 the pressure regulator is vented right to to the top and the whole orifice that's the screen filter is made out of steel 
and it's really thin and then the the screen goes over top of it and then this is like hanging somewhere uh, a few inches up above it so instead of it blowing inside the filter it's more or less creating like a wall around the filter to push debris back down to help keep your filter clear um so i'm gonna start stop waving this camera around waving my hand around to make you guys feel like you're drunk um I'll leave links to everything in the description as usual. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, don't be shy. And please don't forget to subscribe. More videos to come. Stay tuned. Catch y'all later.